Hello, my name is Brian Law. Today I'm going to talk about Clock 25. This is the latest clock um, to be designed. Um, it's, it's called the Beginner's Clock um, because what we try to do is, is to make a simple um, design um, that doesn't need um, an excessive amount of um, tooling or equipment to build it. Um, We've tried to design it so that all the hard work is done by the actual CNC machine, um, leaving um, the, the simpler tasks of assembly um, to be done by hand. The pendulum consists of three parts. It's got the pendulum head, the pendulum rod, which is carbon fibre, it's, um, it's got the pendulum bob, and the pendulum lock. Now, the head is attached to the carbon fiber rod um, with glue. I've used um, Gorilla Glue in this case. It gives a very strong bond. Um, and it's simply in the pendulum rod is simply inserted into the hole in the bottom of the pendulum rod um, with a little bit of glue applied. That, that's left to dry for half an hour or so um, so that it doesn't get disturbed. Um, and then we go on to fit in the, um, the pendulum bob and the pendulum lock. Now if we move down to the other end, um, what you can see here is that the, the lock itself um, is this uh, component here uh, with a hole in the centre that fits into the rectangular slot in the centre of the pendulum bob. Um, the hole in the centre is slightly bigger than the rod itself and can move quite freely. But when it fits into the bob you can see that there is actually a slight amount of compression that we can put into it by pressing. Um, what this means is that it's set nominally um, so that it's a tight fit around the, the rod itself. So you can't actually push it in until you press down on it. Once you press down on it, you can push the rod through. When you let go, it's locked in place. So that's it for the, um, the assembly of that. Quite simple. Um, quite simple. And um, we'll leave it there for now. Now the next step is to fit the head of the, the head of the pendulum to the back of the frame. Um, and we're going to do this by fitting, firstly, one of these small hangers through the back. Best if I if I do this separately, we fit the hanger through the back here and push it into position. So. It's now firmly in place. And now we can rest the pendulum head onto that, ready for the escapement assembly to be put into place. Now the escapement assembly um, consists of the escapement arm, the spacer, and the pallets on either side, plus the pivot rod across the, the top. Now, this escapement needs to be fitted uh, rigidly to the um, pendulum head so that the two move together. So, there is a large slot cut into the top of the, uh, the frame so that um, the spacer and the uh, pivot rod can pass through. So we push those through there now. And I'll turn this on the side so I can see what I'm doing. And there we go, with a bit of fiddling, 
and now we can position the top hanger in place and we've got the bottom one in place that's it you can fit the top hanger in place fitting it over the end of the shaft like so and then we can lock that top hanger in place with a wedge like that. Now the whole assembly um, is held rigidly together so the pendulum moves with the escapement. Okay, having got to that point we can now have a look at the assembly of the gear shafts. There are four shafts in all. There's the drive shaft which is the one that um, uh, has the cord wrapped around it to carry the weight and that's at the bottom of the frame. Then there are these intermediate shafts which sit between uh, the drive shaft and the final shaft we're here, which is the escapement. Um, now some of these parts are actually glued together already um, so the um, back um, spacers on these two frames are actually glued in place but if we put those to side one minute I can actually show you the basic um, assembly of these items if I take them apart I'm going to take this pin out remove the wedge I can now take off the gear the spacer and the main gear so we've got all of the components ready to assemble okay first things first the side plates slide through from the back the spacer fits from the front whoops 16 tooth gear again fits from the front and now we fit the small pin into place and finally we can put the wedge in pushing the wedge into position locks all of those components tightly together now we can finish off by putting the end discs on with the pivot pins and same at the, the back and the assembly is complete now that's the same for the, the other three shafts basically if there is any looseness um, in here uh, in the fitting of the, the end disc then it's perhaps best to um, just glue those as well okay now we can look at the assembly of the gear shafts onto the frame and we do those successively from the top positioning the escape gear in place and then I always get these two mixed up but not this time that's gear train number three gear train number four goes on next and then finally the drive gear train number one and hit drops into place like so So you can see that we've got them all assembled now, ready for the front frame to be fitted. This is the front frame. It's fitted across the, the top. We engage the, the long drive shaft first and then make sure 
that we engage the two pillars and one at a time we can fit the gears into place. Now to lock those in position we're going to actually use two more wedges, one for the bottom one for the top. All right, now we're ready to fit the gears onto the shafts. Now this first gear, uh, the small eight millimeter gear, uh, sorry, eight toothed gear, fits onto the drive shaft. It's a tight fit. Um, needs to be a tight fit because the drive shaft is going to turn. Um, this gear and it should be positioned so that it's just shy of the surface so it's free to rotate. Then we fit the next two gears which is the 32 tooth gear and the 10 tooth gear. These two gears are actually held fitted together, they're actually glued together so they can't move, they move together. So this 8 tooth gear is going to drive the 32 tooth and the 10 tooth gear is going to drive the 30 tooth gear which takes um, the hour hand and we fit the um, minute hand onto the shaft directly. That's that assembly finished. Now all we need is for the dial to be fitted, get it the right way round, and it fits two pins in the back which you drilled previously, and that fits when I get it in the right holes, like so. And you can glue that in place so that um, it doesn't move. Okay, that's the clock assembled. Now we can fit it to the wall. We'll fit the cord for the weight around the bottom pulley. Try not to knock the dial off in the process. Okay, I've got a little bowline knot tied into the bottom here to form um, a loop that won't slip. And on the top of the uh, Coke bottle that I'm going to use for a weight, I've got this little um, hanger that we cut out um, from the plans and to wrap that around. and that will then hang nicely just there. Um, to wind the clock you simply pull on the, the counter weight string and lift the weight itself. Now to start the clock swing the pendulum. Now that that's running pretty well. Um, I'm talking about the very top here um, where you can see the escapement moving backwards and forwards. Um, the engagement between the pallet and the escapement itself has got to be equal both sides so that it tick tock, tick tock, equal. And that's doing just fine at the moment. Now you can adjust the position of the pallets um, by unscrewing the screw at the side, moving the pallet up or down, screwing back up again until you get to a position where both sides are acting equally. To adjust the rate of the clock you need to move the pendulum bob up to speed it up and push it down uh, to slow it down. And of course to wind it as we've just shown um, pull on the counterweight string and slightly lift on the, the weight string. That's it. Adjust the time to 
give you the correct time and away you go. And that's it, thank you.